Hello everybody, welcome. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is Monday, it's Labor Day, September 4th, 2023. It's 12, 12 p.m. sometime here in the Ozarks. And before we get started, if we could just for a minute, I was out in the garden this morning. This is from a vine that grew out of the bed number three, up and over the trellis down and this is down on the where the watermelon were, were supposed to grow they didn't do so well and so now there's some zucchini and such and I had to cut one of them off because it was killing the plant the bigger one this is the little fella that's left zucchini it's a zucchini jungle out there I'm not kidding you squash everywhere there's a cucumber and he's growing big and strong right next to the zucchini. Tomatoes everywhere. And the, the the squash grew out of bed number three across the trellis. And then it just it wasn't able to go out there for a few days. And it just started growing on the chain link fence. This is, uh, I helped it a little bit with some ties, but it's just tying itself. Growing along the chain link fence. cucumber and he just found him a happy spot up there on the top I'm not kidding you this is after so me and Don went through picked off a pile of them for Gary and went out there today and got another big bag of tomatoes zucchini cucumber he decided to grow right up there on the edge and one I didn't even know that one was there Grew down the other side. Ended up taking that one. Zucchini. They grow in all kinds of shapes. So it came out of there today. This one you can see got on the edge of the board. Watermelons. Didn't even know they were in there. And all oh, the leaf got in the way. There's another one back over in here. Not kidding you. It's a jungle back there. All kinds of zucchinis. Uh oh, this is from yesterday's report. Just wanted to share a little bit. Hope that you're inspired to grow something. See, uh, we're taking a look around. Things are getting crazier and crazier. So this is volume five, fifth year of the mystery reports, issue number two, coming in September. There were four issues in 2021, six issues 2020, last year 2022. It looks like it should be about four this year I would say. This is Terrell's 2023 newsletter mystery report. You can subscribe at the website. It's just $25 per year to have access to all the newsletters going back to 2019. And these are some of the... There was... Just before COVID started there was some chat. I was getting ready to start tutor program chat and after COVID started and then relocating and haven't been able to... Well, I, I'm hoping to be able to get time to be able to get those going again. Then John put together, this is from the Awakened Radio series. Back in 2012, I was doing Awakened Radio every Sunday morning. John took out the Black Star reports, edited them, and sent them to me for sharing with you guys. And this report is for Peter. And Peter's in Europe. And Peter is very interested in numerology. And Doug, Peter and, and Doug, Peter and Gary have been conversing somewhat. And this is a, from an email that Peter wrote to me back in the uh, month of May. He said he would like to draw my attention to text you may be aware of. That is a bit off, or at least it appears to be a bit off, in the New American Standard compared to the Greek. Of course, no English translation is correct because of the nuances in the Greek and the Hebrew. That said, and remembering back a couple of years when you explained the differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus, it seems strange there are so many discrepancies in the New American Standard Bible that conflict with the Greek. 
He's not going to list them all, but in the very first verse, the Romans says Christ Jesus when it is Jesus Christ. And we're going to disagree about that. The, um, the same as in these other verses, where Christ Jesus misses out on Christ Jesus completely. Would you, you would think that the translators would look at the Greek and put Jesus Christ around the right way. I'm going to wait, I'm going to go all the way through his message and then begin answering the points. You, they would think that they would get it the right way. The translators are translating. And anyway, I say all this because folks may be confused. They don't look at the Greek as your Bible verses come from the New American Standard Bible. Though I haven't checked any of these other, ver the other verses to be quoted in your YouTube channel. Generally, I do use the New American Standard Bible. And what I found fascinating was checking four verses in Acts. All have Christ Jesus in the Greek, but not in the epistles. Mostly, it's Christ Jesus. Be interested in your thoughts. Okay, so first of all, we should be thinking in Hebrew Aramaic when we're reading the Old Testament. And we're reading from right to left. So we're doing that as a mental exercise. And in the Greek Aramaic, when reading in the New Testament. So in the Greek is left to right, just like English. And the thing to realize is that the copy errors, there are copy errors in the original Greek manuscripts. That's from a copy being made of a copy being made of a copy. That's normal. So there are hundreds and hundreds of copyist errors. No matter what version, if you're looking at the you're looking at the received text or the critical text, those are two primary texts. The critical text, I believe, is a little bit more accurate because they're older, so they've been copied as many times. That's where the Egyptian, the Byzantine manuscripts come from, and that's where the New American Standard is derived. But there are still copy errors. So that's normal. The important thing is, is that whether it's the received text or the critical text, the received text, that's what the King James comes from, for example, in the New King James. It doesn't matter because they agree in over 90%. Both, all the manuscripts agree. And then you have the majority text, which is not actually a set of manuscripts. It's, it's where the majority of all the t text agree. That's the majority text. What that means, but the original copiers means that God's word has been delivered. God knows how to deliver His mail. Yes, there are copy errors that are there, and you are dealing with an English translation. If English is your first language, I hope, and God has the ability to deliver the mail. That's the important thing. Everybody has access to the same translations and the same manuscripts, and the Holy Spirit is alive inside of us. So that we can make sense of what's going on. So this diagram right off the top I put here to help explain to you guys, that especially if you've never heard of this before, the differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. Because there's a difference. And there's a reason that the Apostle Paul particularly, that you're not going to see a mention of Christ Jesus in the four Gospels. It wouldn't make any sense for it to be there. because the revelation of the mystery was given to the Apostle Paul to understand that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together, the heavenly man, heaven, in the beginning God created heaven and the earth, Genesis 1.1. Heaven right here is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is Christ Jesus with a spirit, soul, and a body. The Son of God, God's Word incarnate, it's Jesus Christ walking around on the earth, down here on this earth. So let's stop right here for a second. And Gary and I have gone through this probably more than any anybody else that, I've, that I'm aware of. And there's a lot of incarnating going on. And then once we realize how the Word has incarnated in these different realms, then we can see how the Word is incarnate inside of us. And God is incarnate inside of him, inside of us. And then we can see ourselves as gods in this infinite realm, 
with an incarnation in heaven, the almost infinite heaven. We're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now. With Christ. Ephesians 2. Start at 4. And I'll pull that up and read it to you before this episode is over. And then, the Word, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Christ Jesus, incarnated into heaven of Genesis 1.8. This is heaven of Genesis 1.8, between the heavens and the earth. Heaven. This is the waters above, this is the waters below. And this is heaven, Genesis 1.8. This is the expanse, or the firmament, depending on your translation. And in the center of heaven, there's a throne. And that's the throne of the Lamb of God, from Revelation. It's Revelation 7.17. He is standing in the center of the throne, right in the center of heaven, the administrative hub. So that's the incarnation of Christ Jesus in our universe. Takes away the sin of the whole world, the Lamb of God. So the Lamb of God then incarnated onto this little planet Earth. And John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Because he, Jesus Christ, having the appearance as a man, is the Word incarnate. John the Baptist recognized him. But the Lamb of God is still standing in the center of the throne. Christ Jesus is still right here. The almost infinite realm that's between God and men. Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2.5. The man, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Christ Jesus. Not the literal walking around the earth man. Okay. So, and while, as all this is happening, God's word is still one with God in his infinite realm. God asked his word to incarnate. He did. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God asked Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Word, to incarnate into heaven. He did, as the Lamb of God. And then he says, Lamb of God, incarnate down on the earth and be Jesus Christ. And he did. And he went down into the earth and was raised on the third day. And then he was raised above all the heavens and seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. A whole lot of incarnating going on. So then we have Christ in you. Colossians 1.27, according to the mystery. Christ incarnate inside of us, the new man in us. Christ in you. That's Christ Jesus, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit incarnate inside of us. And God is in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, 2 Corinthians 5. Start at 19. Oh, start at 16. Get down to 19. That's where God is in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. So, Likely, if you've never heard of Jesus Christ and the differences between Christ Jesus, this is very confusing. And you may be thinking that this is too far too complicated. To be real, this is the truth. All this incarnating going on. If you think about it, heaven and earth are created. The only realm that's real is right here, God's infinite realm. That's where you're from, and that's where I'm from. And we all know each other. So that's why David says that you are God's sons of, and sons of God, sons of the living God. And we are. So the Apostle Paul describes Christ Jesus, the one mediator between God and men. Christ Jesus, the Christ Jesus, Christ in us, that's incarnate. Because he received the revelation of the mystery about our gospel, about God's Incarnation inside of us, inside of Christ in us. That's what shared in the the Apollon epistles. God's word distinguishes Jesus Christ. The in let me start again. God's word distinguishes Jesus Christ, the incarnate Lamb of God, God's word in the flesh, appearance as a man, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now at the right hand of God, from Christ Jesus, heaven of Genesis 1-1, the almost infinite realm. So that's where Michael the archangel was fighting the dragon right now. In an almost infinite realm, revelation is taking place, it has been taking place, since the days of Adam. 
the realm is so large that the hosts are like constellations from our perspective. And from our teeny little earthbound perspective, that entire realm is frozen motionless. We're in between two milliseconds of time. So this is Christ Jesus, the heaven of Genesis 1 1. The almost infinite realm that's between God and men. God's realm is the infinite realm. This is the almost infinite realm. This is our finite realm. So we share attributes with heaven, even though it's way bigger than us. And heaven shares attributes, being almost infinite, with infinite. That's why you see these veils that are separating. If you hear background noise, it's because it has really started raining outside. Christ Jesus, the entire heaven realm, is incarnate in Christ's body members. That's Christ in you. With God incarnate inside of him, reconciling the world to himself. So we can stop right now and go and check out. So if you go to substack.com, the portion of this is also going to be posted at Substack. And you can see there's Mystery Explain stuff. There's 9-11 there's nano silver there's a mix of well all of the things that i research or sharing with people okay so this is paul's talking about the mystery with the colossians now rejoice in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh i am supplementing what is lacking in christ's afflictions in behalf of his body which is the church I was made a minister of this church according to the commission from God granted to me for your benefit, so that I might fully carry out the preaching of the word of God, that is, the mystery. He talks about it in, throughout his epistles, but in Ephesians 3, particularly, which has had been hidden from the past ages and generations, but now has been revealed to his saints, to whom God willed to make known what is the wealth of glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? That is, the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. That hope of glory right there is the expectation of glory. And the mystery is Christ in you. So, let's backtrack just a minute and ask ourselves a question. Is this... Christ Jesus, the entire realm, almost infinite, incarnate inside of us, or is this a literal, it, the appearance of a man inside of us? Because there's a difference. So let's stop right here, and I want to read to you from Ephesians 2. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our wrongdoings or transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised up with him. So the hymn right here, raised up with Christ, this is Jesus Christ, walking around on the earth, appearance as a man. Raised up with him, Jesus Christ. Raised up with him. And seated us with him, Jesus Christ, right here too. Jesus Christ, with him. In the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Now, some of you might be really shocked to see Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus in the same verse. But that's what it is. We're raised up with Christ. And whenever God raised Jesus Christ up and raised him above all the heavens and seated him at his right, right, at his right hand, that's Jesus Christ. Then you can see right here that we were dead in our transgressions and then he made us alive together with Christ. This is, see, this is the mystery of Christ. Because we're the members of his body. So when God raises Christ up, he raises us up with him. And when God looks at us, he sees his only begotten son, who he loves. And that's the mystery of the whole thing right there. So he seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So those heavenly places in Christ Jesus... That's the heaven of Genesis 1-1 that I showed you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're seated in those heavenly places. 
so that in the ages to come he might show the boundless riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. That includes Jesus Christ, who is also, you can see right here, we're seated with him, with Christ. He's in Christ Jesus too. There's a difference. And the Christ in us, the Christ in you, the expectation of glory, is Christ Jesus. The Word incarnate as the almost infinite realm that is incarnate inside of you and me. So when you go through my book, The Mystery Explained, you're going to see that inside of each member of Christ's body that there is a sphere. It's like a, it's compared to a typewriter ball. See, in the old days, some of you might not even know what a manual typewriter is. Then they came out with an electric typewriter. That electric typewriter has a round ball on it, typewriter ball. That typewriter ball has all of the letters on it, like a face, each individual face. And the ball turns depending on how you're typing. So inside of each of us, Christ Jesus has a big face on it. That's Christ's face. And it has little faces on it, incarnate inside of each of us. We're, we have access to our brethren in us, in heaven. So we don't have to go and look up our brothers and go and run them down and chase them down and find them like in this world. We are connected. We're all members of one another. We're all connected together. That incarnation is the entire almost infinite realm inside of each of us. And your face is on there and my face is on there. And you can communicate with me by looking inward and I can communicate with you by looking inward too. That's an awesome power that we have as sons of God in heaven. So that God can show this the richness, richness of his grace. So what he's doing in front of his mighty angels is he's using the body of Christ like two little herds of goats. And he's going to show that using those two little herds of goats that he can conquer every, all wickedness, all darkness, all, everything in the entire universe. Because we are his vessels of light. He's called upon us to be his tabernacles. We're tabernacles of Christ, Christ inside of us, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Triune tabernacle. Then God is in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Okay, so I just read you that part. And then I want to read you this part right here. So there's an aspect of the mystery that's really something when you when you see it. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one by the flesh. Even though we have known Christ by the flesh, we now know him this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, this person is a new creation. Old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their wrongdoings or transgressions against them. He has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Okay. Right, let's go all the way back to Genesis 2. At the beginning, in Genesis 1, God's doing the work. And God, right here, rests. The heavens and the earth were completed, and all the heavenly lights. And by the seventh day, God completed the work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from his work which he had done. And God blessed the seventh day, and he sanctified it because he rested from all of his work. And God had made and created. Okay. God rested. But here's the key. Here's the key for understanding is right here. God rested in his son. So he has reconciled the world to himself from in his son. That's incarnate inside of you. Here's the next key. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day of the Lord God. See now this is Yahweh Elohim right here. The Lord God. The Lord God right here is the Lamb of God from heaven. The Lamb of God, that's, it, that's who made Adam and Eve. The Lamb of God right here. So the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God incarnate on this earth. And he's at the right hand of God as the Lamb of God incarnate. So... God is in the Lord God doing his seventh-day consecration work. That's the key to understand. 
God needs you and me. I mean, it's hard to imagine God needs anything, right? But God needs you and me to be a tabernacle so that he can sit in his son, in us, and judge all of creation. He needs us, the body of Christ, as heavenly hosts. So we have an angel half and we have a man half put back together again like a man and a woman married. We're, that's already done, completed, seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So our work in the Lamb of God in this creation is as an ambassador. We're sent from the heaven realm, the heaven of Genesis 1-1, into heaven of Genesis 1-8, and where we're going to work for the ages to come in New Jerusalem. That's coming. Okay, and then there's a few more verses that I want to read to you, but I'm going to hold off here just for a second. The Body of Christ members. This is a Body of Christ member from, let's say, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the babes in Christ. Fleshy babes. They have a little bitty overlapping of the spirit in the body. So that the consciousness part, the soul part, is, well, it's kind of small and feeble. Then, see, we can't reach up into this to get up into the knowledge and the wisdom. We can't. There are no steps to get there. This is the way almost everybody in the world is walking around right now. Even members of Christ's body cannot reach. We have to go through the faith, knowledge, and wisdom. The seeds, the shoots, and the fruit. It's the same for everybody. It's the same for me. It's the same for you. We have, must come by faith. We, it's impossible to please God without faith. You must come by faith. That's the seeds. The seeds have to be sown into the heart. As we grow, so faith is jumping out on nothing, not, absolutely nothing, and landing on something that God put there for you, knowing that it's there. Jumping out, land on it. That, then that seed of faith grows, that shoot that comes up, that's knowledge. The fruit that comes out on those branches is the wisdom. Within that fruit is seeds to create a mighty forest, mighty garden and forest. So this is a three-step process. This is one of the images from the Mystery Explained. The spirit, the, the spirit, the water, and the blood. Three witnesses. So first, this, this is an explanation of what I just showed you right here. And um, the branches contain the fruit of God's wisdom, contain the next generation of seeds, allowing God's sons to see spiritually and know these things. That's a reference from Second Peter. Let me show it to you. It's right here. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found spotless and blameless by him in peace and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him. Our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you also in all of his letters, speaking to them of these things, in which some things are hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do the rest of the scriptures, to their own destruction. This is what's going on right now by those blinded by denominationalism. Those that are taking kingdom doctrine for Peter, John, and James and the kingdom bride, and grace doctrine for Paul, Barnabas, Titus, and the body of Christ, and mixing them together to take out what tastes good to them. There's no veil in between. The veil's broken. They mix it all together. It's like a stew. And they take out denominationalism, takes out what's... This looks good. This looks good. Hey, this is what... Yeah, we'll start our own church. We've got the truth. Nobody else has it. They're mixing together kingdom and grace doctrine in different ways. And they're being deluded. They're led around by the nose, by the deluding influence, forcing them to believe what is false. All the days of their life, we cannot help them. Some of you may be railing against me right now. Because I'm showing you the veil that separates kingdom and grace. The water and the blood. Christ came in water and in blood, not in water only, but water and in blood, kingdom and grace, law and grace. And the three testify, and the three are into the one, the spirit, the blood, and the water. God's word, spirit, blood, and water. The blood part is for you and me. That's the way it works. 
then I used the, the new King James Version. It was a Schofield Bible. For the first decade of my studies, I learned from Judy Bailey, her mother Catherine. I went to Bible study with Catherine twice a week and once with Judy for five years. And outgrew them and left the group and came back and then God had shown me so much more. They were looking at me like I had three heads, not kidding you. And um, Exhaustive Concordance had the big giant one for the received text for the New King James and then the big giant one for the New American Standard. And underlines and all types of, I mean, they were both workbooks for me. Did that for a long time. Dissecting and trisecting the original languages. And then it was about after ten, the first 10 years, then I switched to the New American Standard. And today I use the English Greek interlinear Bible. Because you want to see the prefixes and suffixes on the Greek. So whenever you are looking, using your concordance, thing to realize is you're only dealing with the root words. You're only looking at the root word. When you use the English, Greek, and linear Bible, you can see the root word and you can see the prefixes and suffixes to know what the word it really is. So you're seeing that this word, particular word that you're looking up is used so many times. That's not the truth. A word with that root word was used so many times. Whenever you really get into God's word, you love God's word and you want to know the truth and you figure those types of things out. But my view is that God schools us via his word to think in the original languages. So whenever you are defining like the word mystery, mysterion, if you're thinking in English, you're never going to get it. You have to think in the, using the definitions of the ancient Greek. That's what makes God's word excellent because the ancient Greek does not change. English words change with each generation because they use them differently. And the dictionaries, Webster's and such has to be upgraded, updated. Vine's definitions stay the same. The Hebrew definitions for the way that the Hebrew was used thousands of years ago, ancient. That stays the same. Those are the definitions that we use when reading God's word. That's important. Then uh, my view is that God schools us to think in the original language, but then we graduate for God to reveal himself in us in Christ Jesus, incarnate within our souls. That's the transition that happened, that happened to me. Now, like this diagram, I haven't shown it very much. This is from my book, The Mystery Explained. And this diagram, then, this is New Jerusalem. Being, this is the almost infinite realm, heaven, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is the heavens, heaven, and earth with the angels and the men. So the Lamb is in the center of the throne here, but this is Revelation 21, 1 plus 2. God is lowering New Jerusalem down into an almost infinite realm, down into a finite realm. And this is the angels, and this is their human counterparts. Peter, John, and James on the Sea of Glass have an angel counterpart. They haven't been all reassembled yet. Like members of Christ's body, we're inside the Lamb, members of his body. Right here. So just like there's a tabernacle here, whenever you see God's three witnesses, you're going to see that God's word, his literal written word, is an incarnation too. It's an incarnation of the Lamb of God. It's an incarnation of New Jerusalem and of heaven. You see the pattern, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. New Jerusalem has the same pattern. It has walls, constructs. When you look down on it, you can see the image of a man. When you look down on the temple in Jerusalem, you see the image of a man. Because that's the image that you see when you look down in heaven. God has done all these things as patterns and as designs and as of types. Right down to the 12 golden pans all mean something in the temple and in the tabernacle. So this is presenting the word of God, the word of the cross. See, preaching the gospel of the kingdom conveys, does not convey the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water, the faith of Jesus, the spirit of God's word, and the Holy Spirit of promise. Those are the three components that comprise Christ in you. Spirit, blood, and water. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Begins as an infant babe in you and grows up, matures, because you're feeding it God's word. Spiritual food for spiritual new man inside of you. And we mature as the new man in us matures. 
to my advantage and being able to see so many things is that God's been doing this with me for a long, long time. And the people that are just coming to this knowledge, see like Gary, he sees it way better for, for a few years now. He's been asking me questions and can go talk, go, going back and forth in emails and coming over here and working with me on the property and asking me tons and tons and tons of questions. And so Gary is in a position now that he's between you and me. If we can ever get the the chat room going, then the idea is that if Gary has it right now, he doesn't. He has about as little time as I do. Well, all the prepping, and everything, all the craziness is going on around us. My hope is to open up like a pal talk room or a teeny chat or something like that. And as more people wake up to what's going on here, then you have a place to go and you can be with like-minded people and ask each other questions and I can come in and answer questions and you guys can go through the mystery explained and watch the videos and things like that. That's what we did in Pal Talk with Terrell's research group and the heavy mass object and the black star and, 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 and the biological weapon and all that, which back then it was H1N1 back in 2011. So a lot of information conveyed in these diagrams in, in the mystery explain whenever you see it. So at some point, the, reala the realization dawns that Christ Jesus is incarnate inside of us and is a representation of God's written word. That's the blueprint for heaven and New Jerusalem. They're all testifying like angel song. So scripture, whenever you read scripture and read scripture and read scripture and you read the New Testament over a hundred times like I have, and you know who a spirit witness is and who's a blood witness and who's a water witness. And you realize they're all testifying simultaneously from God's word. They're all testifying about themselves. They're testing about, testifying, for example, the Son of God testifies about my Father who art in heaven and the Holy Spirit continuously. The Holy Spirit testifies for the Son and the Father continuously. All the way from Genesis 1-2, the Spirit moving across the waters. That's the Holy Spirit of God. All the, from the temple, from John the Baptist, born in his mother's womb, born with it in his mother's womb, until Revelation 22, 17. The bride and the Spirit say, come. That's the Holy Spirit. There's a thread of the Holy Spirit testimony throughout God's Word. It's testifying continuously. So it's, look at it like a phonograph record. And it's beginning to end, has the whole song. It's where you're reading at that moment where the needle's on the record. And that's where you're getting the testimony. But when you can remove the record, and if you've read the whole song, you've read the whole thing, then you can scroll back and forth and back and forth in your mind, in your spirit. And you can hear the angel song. The song of the Lamb, the song of Moses, spoken about in Revelation. It is so cool. Whenever you can see, literally see, by the Spirit, God's Word testifying then that's, where do you think these diagrams came from? I didn't make this stuff up, guys. This is God's stuff. It's on the record. Depending on where the needle's on the record. Then this, these diagrams were drawn in 2005. In the summer, over a three-month period. And the book, Mystery Explained, it was drafted back then, but it wasn't finalized edited and published until November 2027, uh, 2017, sorry. So, um, the, the New, New Jerusalem, oh, this, I stopped in the middle of the sentence, sorry. All are testifying as angel song, the song of the Lamb and the song of Moses. The song of Moses is sung by the bride. The song of the Lamb is sung by the body of Christ, the members of the Lamb's body in this universe. Within our beings, emerging from us as light from God's tabernacle, as a testament to the ends of the universe. So that you and I can look out into the universe and we see darkness and we see speckles of light. The day is going to come whenever the light is going to extend from one side to the other. You will not be able to see stars at night. And we will testify to those that come after us about the darkness and the twinkling of the lights and things like that and they will think that we are out of our minds what are you talking about that is impossible 
they're going to give you 25,000 reasons why that's impossible. Because that in the future, the entire universe is going to be filled with light and so much light that you can't see, you can't see Orion, you can't see the Leo constellation and such. God opens spiritual doors to his sons, diligently seeking him through his living word until we reach a plateau. It happens to everybody. It happened to me. It happens to everybody. And we seem to get stuck. And we can ascend the mountain of God no longer. The truth is that God reveals his wisdom to his sons through personal study to a point until we dedicate our lives to helping others around us. So I encourage you to, as you go through the six introductory videos on the website, you begin reading the mystery explained, at some point you're going to hit a wall. And at some point you're going to want to introduce these things to someone else. And the then God has to appoint them. When you're reading the Mystery Explained, you're going to go through the definition of Mysterion over an entire chapter, breaking it down. So you always carry it with you. You understand what the mystery, the Mysterion, really means. It means there's a place and a time for everything to be revealed. There was a time for the mystery, the things connected to the mystery that were hidden in God to be revealed through the ministry of the Apostle Paul. Not until that time. And only after God says so, he puts his hand on your shoulder and says, Okay, son, now you can see this part. That's the way it works. So it was a lot of praying on your hands and knees. But Lord God, I want to see more. I want to see more. I want to see more. And then getting yourself the right tutor. That's what the tutor program is about. To have somebody that can see around those corners, around the rock that's in the way. To be able to help you say, Ah, this is what you need to see to help you to grow. See, in the future, in the ages to come, you're going to be hiring tutors and giving them stones out of your chest plate to tutor you to the end of the age so that you can get ahead in the next age. That's going to happen. The stones in your chest plate are the most important thing in your existence because that gives you access to places. That tells the story of who you are or everybody you pass. The, the light, the way that it shines against your chest plate and the colors tell your story. So if you have, well, rough cut stones, you're low on the totem pole, you have dingy garments, you have a lot of work to do. And if you have beautiful white garments, radiant, you have a scepter, you have a big crown with jewels and the stones are have facets that with the corners that are razor edge sharp so the light shines off them and reflects off everything. It's like a Christmas tree. Some sons of God are like Christmas trees. They're walking around in an aura of light. And just when you just look at them, that makes you glow. Like Moses, light shined when he came out from behind the tabernacle. He came out behind the veil. His light would be shining white from being in front of the Holy Spirit. Same as that. So the sons of God are going to be like rock stars. The, the citizens of heaven come running for the light. That light is going to extend to the ends of the universe eventually. It starts off rather dark. This whenever you know the first, especially this period coming up, whenever we assume the heavenly seats of the devil and his children that are in that are bound, they're chained in the bottomless pit. This is a period of darkness that we're going to work out of. We're still moving through the evil age of this darkness right now. Things get much better in New Jerusalem the when the earth is remade. But then we're going to, the, the heaven and earth are going to be remade hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times before we get to the ages of the ages. So you're going to, this mystery explained is going to give you a head start. It's going to give you a jump on others that have never seen these things before. Eventually, the things, all these things that I'm showing you, you're going to see them on the standards, on the hallways, in the temple of Almighty God. You're going to see these symbols that I'm showing you right here. And it's all important to us. It's very important. This gives you a head start on that for those who recognize the opportunity. Then, um, this is precisely uh, what um, what Gary's been trying to do for Peter. Because Peter, you you like the you've got a lot of experience in the numerology, and you think that's where it is. That's where your niche is. You're trying to get us to go walk that road with you whenever. What Gary's trying to show you and what I'm trying to show you is the differences between the two Gospels and the New Testament is the foundation block where you begin. 
then the two churches, then the four baptisms, then the differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus, then the differences between the Almighty and my Father art in heaven, and then the presentation on God's real true Bible code, how the three witnesses of Scripture, how the mystery diagrams work. Those six introductory diagrams, number of man, extremely important. That's the foundation. Once you go through that process, then we are going to use the same term. So going through the same process, everybody going through that same process eliminates the semantics. So when I say gospel, if, I, if somebody comes up at you and just starts saying the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, are they talking about the gospel of the kingdom? Are they talking about the gospel of the grace of God? Do they know the difference? Have they mixed them together and to create a false gospel? Semantics. When they say the church, are they talking about the kingdom bride church, Peter, John, and James? Kingdom disciples? Or are they talking about the body of Christ church, the mystery church, church that the prophets never saw? That's what we are building today, the body of Christ. Paul talks about the body of Christ over and over and over again. He never uses the term numphy one time. The bride of Christ, he never mentions the bride one time. But that's not us. That's Peter, John, and James. They're the priests. We are the kings, the rulers, the judges. We judge the world and the angels. Peter, John, and James make intercession for them from the sea of glass. A breadcrumb, a spiritual breadcrumb trail has been laid down for those chosen by God to see his wisdom hidden very much in plain sight, beginning with the six introductory videos in the scripture section at terrell03.com. God builds a spiritual foundation within us first upon which his wisdom is built precept upon precept into the massive structure. Understanding the vast differences between Jesus Christ and Christ, Di Christ Jesus becomes vital and important once the differences between the two Gospels, two churches, and four baptisms are understood. God's sons are then ready to see the differences between Almighty and my Father who art in heaven. And then how the mystery diagrams work. That completes the foundation construction process. Why these topics? This is God's stuff. I'm only the living tabernacle. Shown the way since my youth and doing my best to help those appointed by God to see. That's what I'm trying to do. But most of the people don't see what I'm talking about. Most people don't see it. But it's hidden. It's God's stuff. It's hidden right in front of everybody. And they see something else. The deluding influence has them by the nose. They are believing what is false. And like I said earlier, there's nothing you can do to fix that. That's just the way that it is. So this is a little bonus. Back in May, I was watching this video. You can check it out. And Dr. Braun, he says there's no way of knowing. He's one hour and 29 minutes in to this video that's right here. And there is a way of knowing, for certain. Waters are heaped up before Moses and before Elijah, who are skins, see here the lightning, I might lose power here, who are skins for Adam and Eve. So Adam, skins for Adam are Elijah, Abraham, David, John the Baptist, and others. Skins for Eve are Noah, and Moses, and Sarah, and Bathsheba, and others. They are the two witnesses of Revelation 11. They are the two olive trees that are testifying for the Lord of the earth. In Zechariah 4, 11 through 14. Everybody else, every seventh-day person, Hebrews 9, 27, every other seventh-day person lives once per age, and then the judgment. There are only two exceptions. There's three begottens in the Bible. Three. So they were made. They were not born. That's Adam was made. Eve was made from taken out of his side. And our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only begotten Son of God. Conceived of the Holy Spirit. Three begotten. That's it. Everybody else is adopted as a son. As a member of Adam's body on the earth. And a member of Christ's body in heaven. And a member of God's body in the infinite realm. That's the truth. And that's the way that it works. So periodically, from time to time, these two witnesses, they're not going to show up anytime soon. They, they show up at the end of the age. The day of the Lord hasn't even started yet. We're, but the day, we're witnesses of how the day of the Lord is about to begin. It begins like the tilling of a garden with purification by fire and water. That's about what's about to happen. The black star does that. The black star caused the flood of Noah. The black star caused the earth changes of Moses' day. It comes with the prophet.
God divides time from time. People lived a different number of years before Noah. Thousands of years old. They lived to be 120 years after Noah, and then after up to Moses, and then the lifetimes went after Noah's flood down to 70 years. That's what it is now. It's going to go back to thousands of years after the black star comes. Everything's going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. People that are alive and kicking when the day of the Lord begins will be there at the end. 3,600 years later. So this is a special bonus for Mystery Report newsletter subscribers. I hope that you'll subscribe. It's just $25 a year. You get access to all the newsletters going back to 2019. And I hope to get time to do, I believe uh, uh, Gary wrote two questions. So there, there's enough content right now for two more Mystery Report newsletters for this year. That's what I'm looking at right now. If you're a Tutor Program subscriber, you can send me your questions. Maybe I can get a, I can do my best to try to get another one in there. The um, things are crazy town right now. The economy could collapse any time. That's the report that I have for you. Remember that you can get information over at substack.com. Hope you'll go there and subscribe. Support me if you have the resources. Richard, I'm not talking to, to you. If you do not have the resources, then you can go to Substack and you subscribe and it's free. If you have the resources, then I hope that you will support me if you can on this earth. And I'm going to owe you something on the other side of the veil. So if you want to, if, if you're, God has you in a situation where you can only prepare spiritually and you can't support me physically, then that is 100% fine and dandy because Lord God's going to sort things out on the other side of the veil. That's good for both of us on the other side, all equitable. So if you haven't seen a report in a while, you'll see there's many changes here. There's Stripe options along with PayPal. You can also use, you can also use Zelle, that's new. Cash App, that's new too. It's part of the research. Everybody that subscribes, this is how you subscribe to a mystery report. Right here, it's just $25 a year. And then if you don't want it, if uh, you're not sure how to do any of this, then send me an email right here and I'll send you a link. I can send you a link for anything on this page that you want. Happy to help you. Everybody that subscribes gets a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained. Whenever you subscribe, because this begins at just $8 a month. So when you subscribe, you're going to get a Mystery Report subscription for free. It's a, a, you get access to all the, the Mystery Report newsletters going back to 2019 attached to your notification email. Whenever you become a Substack subscriber. So even if you subscribe for free, subscribe. Because every time there's a Substack article that's posted, then you'll get a notification email in your email inbox. So that's my report, mystery report number two for 2023. Appreciate your support very, very much. Get more information right here at terrellzero3.com. I'll see you on the next mystery report.